Welcome to 7.02 Key Features of Logarithmic Functions. So, um, let's revisit this idea of inverse of a function. So, way long ago we talked about inverse of a function. Um, so, if a function is inverse of another function, what it does is that it undoes the um, function that is inverse of. And the big idea was that x and y are switched and when we actually graph it, um, graphically, the inverses are reflections of each other across the line y equals x. So, um, you know, in the unit 6, we talked about exponential function, right? Here is a basic form of exponential function, y equals 2 to the x, right? If I were to find the inverse of this function, right, I'm going to simply switch x and y writing this equation. So the relationship between these two functions is inverses of each other. Okay, but then scholars, remember, if I were to graph the inverse of this function, right, which is this, when we graph this function, right, we always want to, um, you know, isolate the y. So after I switch x and y, I solve for y. That's how we find the equation of exponential function. Because, let me go grab my graphic calculator. That's because when we graph function, when we graph function right here, we press this button, y equals, and we actually have to write an equation in terms of y equals. Okay. So in order for us to do that, remember, um, how do I isolate the exponent? Well, remember, we can rewrite this into log form. So it's going to be log base 2 of x equals y. You see? So these two are equivalent forms of each other. Okay, so then, okay, hold on a second. If these two are inverses, but these two are equivalent, then what is the relation between this one and this one? Inverse. Okay, so we can say that an exponential function's inverse is a log function. What? Okay, again, so same idea, but with just, uh, you know, base b, nothing substituted in. So again, when we switch x and y, that's how we find inverses. But then, remember, if I were to graph this inverse function of this exponential function, you know, we're in a pickle because I need to isolate y, right? So that's why I can rewrite this exponential equation using log, log base b of x equals y. And so these are equivalent. And so since these two are basically the same thing, if this one and this one are inverses, then this one and this one must be inverses of each other. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what it means to, uh, I mean, what do these look like on the graph? So today we're going to talk about basic shape of exponential, I mean, Sorry, logarithmic functions, okay? So here is graph of y equals 2 to the x, which is this one. And if you revisit the unit 6 notes packet, remember, it goes down, but it's going to approach this x-axis, right? It has an asymptote that's horizontal, and it's going to coast along the x-axis, but it's never going to touch it. So the domain of this function is negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range of this function, remember, the lowest it's going to get in the y value is 0. It's going to get close, but it's never going to touch it, so that's why we don't use the bracket. And then it goes to infinity. Okay, now let's graph the inverse of this exponential function. Okay, so notice here, if I um, you know, find the inverse equation of this one, right? I switch x and y, so that's where this comes from. But again, just like what we talked about here, we can rearrange this into log form so that the y is isolated and I can actually put that into the calculator, right? Graphically, I just said inverses are um, 
reflection across the this point right here, right? This, I mean, not this point, this line, uh, y equals x, right? But also, remember, inverse means switch x and y, right? So for example, this is 0, 1, right? 0, 1. So I need to switch x and y, so it's going to be 1, 0. This one is 1, 2, so I'm going to do 2, 1. This one is 2, 4, so I'm going to go 4, 2. This one is 3, 6, 8. So i got to do 8, 3. So okay. This one is negative 1, and it looks like half. Okay, So i got to do half negative 1. And then this one is negative 2. I think it's a quarter. So uh, quarter negative 2. And then fourth it looks right here. Okay, so then I pointed, I put down the key point and if I reflect it, it's going to look So actually, this is, notice, I just switched the x and y coordinates of the points on this graph, right? So that means this is the inverse of this function. But also, we, it, it makes sense looking at it, right? Because inverse functions are reflections of each other across the y equals x. So we're going to go ahead and graph this, and this one is y equals log base 2 of so let's talk about this, right? This shape right here. It looks like it's going to get closer and closer to y axis, but never going to touch. So the lowest x value I can have, the domain, is going to be 0, right? And then can I have, let's see, can I go all the way to the right? Seems like I can. And the range, let me see, range, looks like I can go all the way down to negative infinity, and looks like it's slowly growing, but it's still growing, right? So if I continue this on and on and on forever, it's going to reach infinity, okay? And so if you look, it actually makes sense, right? Because to find inverse functions, I switch x and y. So notice how the domain of the exponential function became the range of the log function, and the range of this exponential function became the domain. Okay? Everything makes sense. Now, um, there are some things that you just have to memorize in this course, right? So one thing to note is that you do have to know the basic shape of the log function. All right? So we just said this log function looks like it's going to coast along and then it's going to grow very slowly like that. Okay. Now, if I actually put a negative in front of this, right, in front of whatever this log thing is, it actually is a reflection across the x-axis. Okay. So maybe you should make a note. Reflection across Okay. And here, the domain is from 0 to positive infinity, right? Because if you're tra tracing to the left, right, the furthest I can go to the left is close to 0. Same thing here, it's going to approach that 0, but I can go on forever to the right. I can go on forever to the right. Now, range, I can go all the way down, I can go all the way up, I can go all the way up, I can go all the way down. Negative infinity to positive infinity, right? Okay, well, let's go on to this one. Oh, this is funky. So this one, guess what is going to happen? When I actually put negative in front of the input variable, this is reflection across the y-axis. Okay, so it's going to look like this.
and now let's take a look at this one. Okay, notice it's actually the same this function, but then I put the negative in front of the function, so it's actually going to be a reflection of this one across the x-axis as well. Okay, so then it's going to look like this. Okay. So let's take a look at domain of these functions. So domain, I can go all the way to the left, but oh, I can't. The closest I can get is looks like zero, right? I can go all the way to the left, but I can't go further to the right past zero. So domain is going to be actually negative infinity to zero. Range, I can go all the way down, all the way up. I can go all the way down, all the way up. Now, here, key idea of log function is that log function, you see all of these have vertical asymptote. Okay, so what I mean by is asymptote is the, is the, the line in which the function approaches but will never cross, will never touch. Remember MC Hammer can touch this. Okay, that's enough. So, log function will always have a vertical asymptote of the equation x equals 0, okay? Or sometimes it will be x equals some kind of number, okay? All right, so let's do some example problems. Oh, so much information. Example 1, determine the key features of the logarithmic function. Okay, given this, find the domain. So I want to direct your attention to yesterday, what we have discussed in IP, the very last problem, right? Um, to find the domain, scholars, you have to bring back what we know about this part, right? We know base is 2, and actually, you know, um, what was I going to say? This is the result, right? Whatever that is written next to the base subscript is the result, right? And we, yesterday we discussed that this result can never be negative. It can never be zero. Okay, so this result is restricted. So when we're finding for when we're finding domain, all we gotta do is here's the rule. If you wanna memorize this? That's fine. Set result greater than zero. Okay, the result has to be greater than zero. So to find domain. I simply take this greater than zero, subtract eight on both sides. So x gotta be greater than negative eight, right? And so to write this in um, interval notation, go ahead and sketch yourself a mini uh, number line, right? This is negative eight, and this goes on forever to the left and to the right. So x has to be greater. So I know I cannot include this, right? Because again, if I plug in negative 8 in here, I'm going to have a result of 0. Can I raise 2 to some kind of power to get a 0? No, never. So we're going to have to shade in the right side, right? Greater than negative 8. So we know that the domain in interval notation is parentheses negative 8, comma, positive infinity. That's the domain. I don't use bracket because I cannot include negative 8, right? X cannot be negative 8. Um, and then, X, I mean, infinity is just a concept, right? It's not a number. Okay. So then you might ask yours, but okay, so then, like, how would I find the vertical asymptote of this function? Well, it's simple. For vertical asymptote, let's go ahead and make a note. Okay, I'm just going to write vertical VA for vertical asymptote because ain't nobody got time for spelling out vertical asymptote. Okay, that's a lot. So vertical asymptote, we set the result equal to zero. Okay, so again, what is the result? X plus 8. So the vertical asymptote of this function is, I set X plus 8 equal to zero, solve for it, X is equal to negative 8. So if I graph this function, um, which actually I'm about to include it um, in this video, okay? 
um, this your graph. Thing. I have graphed the log base 2 of x plus 8 plus 1, which is the equation in the example 1 problem on page 4 of your notes packet, right? That's the red curve. And then I actually wanted to show you the vertical asymptote x equals negative 8, right? So it looks like the red curve is almost even touching it, but let me go ahead and zoom in, right? So if I, as I zoom in, that's what's cool about the Desmos, okay? As I zoom in and continue down, oh, excuse me, um, it's never going to touch, okay? But is it is going to approach it very, very close, okay? You see, it's going to approach very, very close. Look at it, look at it, okay? But it's never going to touch. So, again, um, simple way to solve for vertical asymptote of a log function is that you simply set the result equal to zero. All right, let's move on. Find the y-intercept and x-intercept of this function. So remember, throwback, y-intercept, we find it by setting x equal to zero. To find x-intercept, we find it by setting y equal to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to plug in zero for x. So I'm looking for f of zero. So log base 2 of 0 plus 8 plus 1. And then let me split this. So this is where finding x uh, intercept. So we'll do 0 equals log base 2 of x plus 8 plus 1. Okay. All right. So then let's go on to this one. Okay. So log base 2, 0 log base 2 of 0 plus 8 is 8, right? So if I can simplify, log base 2 of 8 plus 1. So then now, this is where what we learned yesterday comes alive, right here. What am I thinking to myself as I read this? Well, I hope your answer was 2 raised to what gives me 8? 2 raised to 3 gives me 8. So I can actually simplify this whole thing into 3 and bring down the 1. So bam, I have found my y-intercept. What? Let's go on to find the x-intercept. So here, your gut should say, um, get rid of this 1. Okay, so I subtract 1 on both sides. And um, oftentimes, scholars, you need to be flexible and get into the habit of converting it into exponential form. So remember, 2, snail method, raised to negative 1 is going to yield me x plus 8. So let me write this into exponential form. And I'm solving for x. So this is half, right? So I subtract negative 8, I mean... I subtract 8 on both sides, so then x is equal to half minus 8, well, negative 7.5. And here is my x-intercept, right? And here is my y-intercept, okay? Super cool problem because what we learned yesterday and what we learned previously conceptually um, comes alive in this lesson.